this uh, procedure ready .com talk about torch infections and prenatal care. The thing about prenatal care, there's two divisions of it. One, of the, one part of prenatal care is seeing what people have been exposed to, what people are infected with, and, and how that can impact them or the developing fetus. And the other part is sort of monitoring people and following, following up with them and seeing if they develop um, some sort of complication of uh, pregnancy. And so understanding the torch infections is important because a lot of the things that you're looking for to see if people have been exposed to or infected with are torch infections. And so this talk has the usual disclaimer that this is health information, it's just for education, it's not for managing patients or diagnosing yourself. So if you have a problem, see a healthcare person. So the torch infections, to go over them um, one by one, starting off with toxoplasmosis, that's a protozoan. It comes up in two contexts clinically, so one is HIV and the other is congenital. Here we're talking about the congenital context, so it, it shows up with a classic triad in the, in the baby. So one, hydrocephalus, big head, two, problems in the back of the eye, chorioretinitis, and three, intracranial calcifications. That's the classic triad that you'd see in a baby or a fetus affected by toxoplasmosis. There's no vaccine for toxoplasmosis, and it's not um, necessarily a thing that you test for, but, you, but, but it can be tested for. And what would make you suspicious of someone um, having toxoplasmosis? So in all these in all these cases, you're going to look for signs and symptoms in the mom to make you suspicious that they've acquired this. So it's toxoplasmosis. What, you, what makes you suspicious of it is somebody has a mono-like illness but a negative heterophile antibody test. That that would make you want to go out and test for toxoplasmosis. And with toxoplasmosis, the um, important part for the developing fetus is is the seroconversion. It's not having been exposed you know, years ago or before you were pregnant. It's the seroconversion, and the later it happens along in the pregnancy, the worse it is. Where you get toxoplasmosis most commonly from is from cats, like changing litter boxes, and also from undercooked meats. So uh, pregnant people are uh, encouraged to, not, to not do those things, not change the litter box, and not eat undercooked meats. And so the treatment for toxo is uh, sulfadezine, uh, primethamine together. That's the uh, the mainstay of treatment, and in, not in the congenital context, but in the HIV context, so you'll you'll see this a lot too. Um, the way this shows up is the multiple ring enhancing lesions, CNS lesions, brain lesions. So the next one here is rubella. That's an RNA toga virus. Also comes up in two contexts. So one is as German measles, and the second one is uh, congenital, which is what we're concerned about here. And so just like toxo, rubella has a classic triad, so the three things that can show up with are a PDA, problems with the eyeball, cataract, and also a deafness. And so here, you, as you can see with the PDA, you have an aorta and a pulmonary trunk. Just by way of review, a PDA is a connection between the pulmonary trunk and the aorta, so it's a patent ductus arteriosus connecting so the blood that would go from the right ventricle up to the pulmonary trunk, and then it would go into the aorta instead of going to the lungs. So that's the uh, PDA there, and you can get an antibody titer for this, and that there is a vaccine for it. And so moving on, there's uh, CMV, DNA, it's a herpes virus. comes up in three main contexts. So it was transplant, um, HIV, like CMV retinitis, and then also congenital. And so in the congenital case, the things that CMV can do are seizures, again, you know, the hearing loss, and um, skin findings, petechial rash. There is no vaccine for this. Um, like Toxo, there, but it can be tested for. And if people are trying to avoid getting this, if they're um, negative, then you, one thing they can do is try to avoid uh, daycare. That's one of the main ways that people get CMV is being around little kids in a daycare type setting. HIV, um, RNA, retrovirus. Here, for what it for what it does, I just put a picture of acid fast cysts or cryptosporidium. Because HIV causes recurrent infections and diarrhea, and cryptosporidium is a, an infection that causes chronic diarrhea. So testing for HIV, there's uh, two types of testing. So there's a screening test, which is looking for the antibody. So that's the ELISA. And there's, also, and there's a confirmatory test, which is the Western blot, and that's looking for the protein. HSV, it's a DNA herpes virus. It causes a temporal encephalitis. There's no vaccine for this. And then finally, there's T. pallidum syphilis. That's a bacteria, spirochete. And the, I think about the screening for HIV and T. pallidum in kind of a similar way. So there's the RPR and the BDRL, which are um, 
screening test, and they're also looking for antibodies. And you could follow them up with a confirmatory test, which is looking for actual antigen, actual protein from uh, the, in the infectious agent there. I forgot to mention the um, treatment for, for CMV, scancyclovir. And then as a bonus question, what are, there's three spirochetes that are good, it's good to know about and to be able to name them. So we talked about one, so it's the syphilis T. pallidum spirochete, and the other two are Borella and Leptospira. So it's the three, three spirochetes. And so that is the conclusion of this talk, and thanks for watching. Visit Pistrelli.com for, um, for more, and check out p3kids.org to make, consider making a donation. Thank you.